In this lesson, we will be learning about how a transformer engine works under the hood and how it enables us to transform data fast and efficiently. We have learned that the transformer engine works as a client to Apache Spark application. What does that even mean? Let's discover. We need to understand the relationship between our transformer engine and Apache Spark. According to their website, Apache Spark is a multi-language engine for executing data engineering, data science, and machine learning on single node machines or clusters. It basically is a cluster computing engine focused on data operations. According to our transformer engine documentation, StreamSets Transformer Engine is an execution engine that runs data processing pipelines on Apache Spark. When we run our processing pipelines on Spark that is deployed to a cluster, it benefits us on large datasets and gives us the ability to access parallel processing. In order to understand the process in depth, we can go one by one. Let's first understand how Spark works, then how our transformer engine works. After that, we can just connect the dots and understand the entire schema. Apache Spark started as a research project at the UC Berkeley AMP Lab in 2009 and was open sourced in early 2010. After being released, Spark grew into a broad developer community and moved to the Apache Software Foundation in 2013. Today, the project is developed collaboratively by a community of hundreds of developers from hundreds of organizations. Apache Spark has multiple elements in its architecture. These elements are Spark Core, Spark SQL, Spark Streaming, MLlib, and GraphX. Spark Core is responsible for main functions and components of the program. It delivers speed by providing in-memory computation capability. Thus, Spark Core is the foundation of parallel and distributed processing of huge datasets. It is responsible for memory management and fault recovery, scheduling, distributing and monitoring jobs on a cluster and interacting with storage systems. Spark Core is embedded with a special collection called Resilient Distributed Dataset. Resilient Distributed Dataset is the fundamental data structure of Spark. They are immutable distributed collections of objects of any type. Each dataset in Spark RDD is divided into logical partitions across the cluster and thus can be operated in parallel on different nodes of the cluster. There are two operations performed on RDD, transformation. It is a function that produces new RDD from the existing RDD. Action, in transformation, RDD are created from each other, but when we want to work with the actual dataset, then at that point we use action. This will later be explained in depth. Some of the main features of RDD are lazy evaluation, in-memory computing, fault tolerance, immutability, and partitioning. All transformations in the Apache Spark are lazy, which means that they do not compute the results as and when stated in transformation statements. Instead, they keep track of the transformation tasks using the concept of DAG, directed acyclic graphs. Spark records all of the transformations in a DAG and computes these transformations when there is an action that requires a result for the driver program. This enables Spark to record flow of data thus enabling fault tolerance. If an RDD is lost while having a computation, Spark can use this DAG and create that RDD and apply the operation again. Spark SQL is a Spark module to simplify working with structured data using data frame and data set abstractions. Using Spark SQL, Spark gets more information about the structure of data and the computation. With this information, Spark can perform extra optimization. It uses the core execution engine while computing an output. Data frame and dataset abstractions are essentially RDD on steroids. They are built on top of RDD in order to overcome optimization needs of RDD. Spark Streaming is an add-on to Core Spark API, which allows scalable, high-throughput, fault-tolerant stream processing of live data streams. Spark can access data from sources like Kafka, Flume, Kinesis, or TCP socket. 
Spark uses micro-batching for real-time streaming. Spark streaming groups the live data into small batches. These batches are essentially RDD. It then delivers it to the batch system for processing. MLlib is a machine learning library that delivers both efficient as well as high-quality algorithms, eliminating outside dependencies for the task. The motive behind MLlib creation is to make machine learning scalable and easy. GraphX module is the graph computation engine built on top of Apache Spark that enables it to process graph data at scale. A sample Spark application in a cluster works with a driver node and executor nodes that are bound to the driver node. Driver node is responsible for orchestrating the flow of data, creating and appending tasks to the executor nodes. Executor nodes are also called worker nodes. They report their state, do calculations and return results to the driver node. Let's create a sample Spark application in order to visualize the process. After this, we will visualize how a transformation engine instance works with Spark. Let's imagine a cluster with a couple nodes. We need to operate on cluster's properties in order to append a node as master slash driver node and rest of the nodes as executor slash worker nodes. Spark has its own cluster manager and can work with some of the other cluster managers like Yarn and Mesos. We can use start master and start worker scripts that are documented in Spark's documentation in order to create master and worker nodes. A driver program runs on the master node and has an object called Spark Context, which is responsible for all of the operations, scheduling, task management, DAG creation, RDD creation, and such. A worker program runs on worker nodes that are connected to the master node and waits to get instructions from the driver. Let's examine this basic code in Scala and see how it works. When we first talked about RDDs, we looked at the operations performed on RDD. We mentioned that transformations are done lazily. In this situation, we provide this to the driver. Driver creates the DAG for the instructions until reduce operation. When we come to the reduce operation, Spark actually creates and splits RDD and sends parts to the cluster to be processed in parallel and then get results back. The process is the same for Spark SQL API, but instead of Spark context as an entry point, we have Spark Session API in order to operate on structured data. A sample data frame creation code is like this. If you look at the main object that is used, which is Spark, it is actually defined like this in the lines above. In the previous code example, we defined SC object like this. In these basic examples, we use Spark shell in order to execute our logic. We can put this logic in an object, compile it as an application and use Spark submit script in order to submit our custom logic defined in our main function to any deployed Spark cluster. As a summary, we now know that Spark works with master slash worker architecture in a cluster uses RDD and data frames or datasets on the latest unified API in order to split and parallelize the data, and uses lazy evaluation and in-memory for increased performance. We just summarized architecture and how Spark works. We needed to mention how it works under the hood in order to understand how an instance of Transformer Engine actually interacts with Spark. At last, coming to the Transformer Engine, we had origin, processor, and destination stages on our pipeline. We could program our stages in order to get the pipeline and results we want. I will remove some stages in order to simplify the explanation. We have one origin, one processor, and one destination stage. When we first deploy this pipeline, things happen in this order. The transformer engine connects to the configured cluster and sets up a Spark application creates a description of our pipeline and map stages into a JSON file, which Spark understands. Constantly updates our transformer pipeline UI from the information it gets from the Spark application. When we get data from the origin stage, Spark actually gets the data, 
works with its RDD and data frame magic, gives us the power of parallel cluster computing and reports results back to our Transformer Pipeline UI. This was an overview of Transformer Engine and Spark working together. If you get stuck on a specific problem, you can use information you get from this video to diagnose your problems and their source.